Well, we should be live sometime soon, or maybe now already on YouTube. Well, hello and welcome, my friends, to another episode of Talk Power BI. Today is a special one. This is our monthly dashboard showcase and makeover. Ooh, how awesome is that? Uh, so if you are uh, watching us online, drop us a line in the comments. Of course, we have our, our gang, our Learn Power BI family on the phone with me. And I see Eric, Frank, Robin, Steve, and Thomas. So, and let's see who all is joining us on YouTube today. So yeah, type in, where are you calling it from? Where are you watching us from? Where are you hanging out? Um, and if you're watching this, maybe in the replay, and you haven't subscribed, or haven't clicked that notification bell, make sure you do, because that's how you get notified whenever you go live to hang out with you, uh, talk about Power BI. Uh, so for Dashboard Showcase and Makeover, a few of you have probably heard me say this, <laughs> and I never uh, miss an opportunity to say this, is that in this day and age, you can't just get ahead by doing good work. You gotta be able to tell the story of that work. And if you look around in the industry, um, that's, that's uh, you know, that that's what you see. Now the good news is that earlier you used to have to travel to conferences. Now of course now that's right now that's not even an option or write a book or something. And I've done both. I've done both. But the good news is you don't need that anymore. You can start really small and the story can be told in five minutes. And um, but you gotta start doing it. And I know initially it's gonna be hard. And, and the first time you do it, it's going to be the your worst time ever, right? That, that'll be the worst time, the worst experience telling your story. But you get better and better. And of course, agile is another thing, thing that I truly believe in, kind of the agile life, right? Agile Power BI. So every time you tell your story, you talk about your work to different audiences or to present different things, you're going to get better and better. Uh, so yeah, so this is mainly a platform. We want to give you a safe platform to kind of step up and be able to share your work. Just just get in the habit of it, right? And of course, from there, the sky's the limit. And and again, I talked about conferences and books. Well, don't rule it out, right? I mean, I I always say use the words not yet. I was like, oh, do you want to write a book? And you, you know, like, oh, well, not yet, right? So maybe someday, right? So, and of course, uh, 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 you know, we we recently ran the Power BI conference, um, uh, and. Uh, a lot of folks who had at some point shown up on our Talk Power BI or shown up on the Dashboard Showcase, you saw them stepping up to the Power BI conference as well with a worldwide audience. Thousands of people attended. Probably you were there too. Thank you if you were there. Uh, so talking about conference really quick, number one question we're getting is, gosh, what are the recordings? So we were able to provide early access to recording to our students, Learn Power BI family, so if you're in the Learn Power BI family, and I'm sorry, I didn't send an email out, but it's in the Facebook group in, in one of the announcements, and uh, you, sh you can get access to the recording right away. And that happened a while ago. We've been working to make the access available to everybody else, and that's coming soon. All right, so Ellen, welcome. Uh, boy, we got our YouTube tribe, tribe popping up. So let's say hello to them, and then we'll jump in. And we have, who do we have today? We got, oh, not this, that one. So folks, we have uh, dashboards from Father Rahmanasal, and that one is a is going to be a makeover of a makeover because we reviewed his dashboard some time ago, and he sent a new one. So we're going to see, and uh, Ricardo Correa. Tibaros sent in, Gabriel Medina sent in. Uh, Yavuz as well, if you're on and watching, you got your email, but it didn't have anything anything attached. It was like I checked twice. I don't know what happened. So you missed the attachment. Who do we have on? Raghavind Raghu says hi. Widget says new subscriber from Ireland. Hello and welcome, Widget. Rajesh says hello. Fadl is here from Kana. Fadl, I think we'll... we'll uh, we'll take your dashboard first because you were the first one to send it in. Uh, Dinesh Kumar says hi. Winston says hello from Phoenix. Dinesh is from Germany. Sailor 1000J, that's Gabrielle, watching from Miami. So Gabrielle Medina, I hope. 
because you sent in your dashboard. Frank is here from Netherlands. Um, hello from Israel. If that's you, Yavuz, then yeah, try to send your email again. I just don't have your dashboard. Uh, Naveen says hi. Susan says hi from England. Ferdinand says hello. Working from home. Yeah, aren't we all now? <laughs> it's funny. San Mateo, California. Uh, Tamdin says hi. Uh, you know, Abi. So by the way, folks, um, one more you know kind of shout out before we kind of dive into the dashboard showcase. Next week we are back again back again for uh, Charles and Avi show and we kind of renamed it power on show but I'm excited about it and frankly the power on show with Charles has been amazing already I think we've just in one but yeah it feels amazing because oh, I'm in the wrong place it's kind of given me permission to be myself isn't it funny right I and mean, sometimes it feels like we need permission to be ourselves you know and and well but yeah, so that's uh, I'm glad to have Charles around. So, so yeah, we're we're. It lets me talk about stuff which maybe otherwise I hesitate. So yeah, so we're gonna talk about our lives. How does it work? I mean, freelancing and so forth. And of course, uh, a big part of uh, my life was you can see I work out of my bedroom, or as one of my students said, the the Learn Power BI Worldwide Headquarters. So this is it. Welcome to it. And. Uh, and you know, so that was very novel, and of course, for, it was novel for me as well, because you know, all my life I'd done the commute, done the nine to five, and by now, all of you have experienced working from home. <laughs> and unfortunately, speaking to all of my nine to five friends, uh, what I'm hearing inevitably is that it's busier now. So, uh, just you know, sorry, I mean, kind of a tangent, but. Um, if you do have a nine to five job and now you're working from home, just type in the comments and like, is it is it harder or is it easier? Uh, just curious. All right. Okay. Cool. So we'll we'll talk all, all about all that. So working from home, you've experienced, but the other aspects. And yeah, we we'll, we'll, you know we'll we'll uh, the good, bad, and ugly. All right. So let's do the dashboard showcase and makeover. We're gonna start with Fadl's uh, dashboard. So let's see, uh, follow Ramon. And let me see if we had anything more about follow. So he's, this is the dashboard he had created for the National Blood Service, Ghana, NBSG. Uh, and there's one for the general public, and the other is for the management. Interesting. I want. Got it. Wow. Okay, let's see. So that is the old one. And let's bring up the new one. And we'll just focus on that. So first of all, right, I mean, we, we, we always kind of start by celebrating quite a few things. For one, the work that you have done. And often we don't do that. We don't acknowledge the work that we have done, how far we have come. Uh, I'm telling you, one of my pet peeves is... Um, is the line like, oh, Avi, I'm just getting started because that line is so overused and it's used by people who are actually just getting started. But it's also used by people who have been working with Power BI for a month to a few months to even a few years. And I'm like, God, no, no, you're not just getting started. I, I know people are just getting started. You're not it. <laughs> but we love carrying around that newbie badge. And uh, my friends, our, our, our thoughts become a reality because they're the ones who get translated into words and actions. And if you keep walking around with that newbie label stuck firmly on your head, guess what? You're never going to step up. And regardless of whether that's an employee position, 9 to 5, or um, uh, kind of a freelancer, entrepreneur, consultant, professional, whatever, you, you're not going to step up because your label wouldn't let you. Because in your world, it wouldn't be possible, right? I mean, mentally, you would... Uh, exclude yourself from a lot of these possibilities like oh I can't do it because I'm a newbie and again that might happen consciously that might happen subconsciously so watch out for that all right so uh, um, all right okay so uh, so first let's celebrate that so for the work that he has done that's awesome and of course in this case this seems to be a, a great for a great cause right the national 
uh, blood service in, in Ghana. And uh, clearly, it's going to be of great help to them. I, I can't imagine what was there before. So some often w when we have some of the other sessions like Real Power BI, I say, uh, do the BAR format, bar if you want, uh, problem, action, result, right? Where you say, hey, this was a problem uh, and this was action, this was the result. It's really simple format, works great. But, you know, tell a story. And again, every time you do it, you're going to get better. So I say, show me kind of, oh, yeah, they were, I don't know, doing this by, by hand on a whiteboard, <laughs> which I know they probably weren't doing it. But I've heard stories. And um, I think there was one project with Greg uh, Berg presented at the Real Power BI where it was about a, a, a kind of a, um, a board on the shop floor and they were writing things by hand. So that's not uncommon, you know. So uh, and then you take it to Power BI. So that's awesome. But we also want to celebrate, man, it takes courage. It takes courage to take action. And uh, sometimes I talk to people and they're surprised when I share some of my, uh, <laughs> you know, kind of the, the fears that I go through, that I tackle. And, and they're like, oh, really, Avi, you go through that? I'm like, yeah, all the time. And, and of course, I see, I've seen other members, you know, including Charles. Uh, right, so we'll be hanging out, and and I've, I've certainly seen Charles kind of go through all of that fear. So, um, in that part, we are all like, but there's one part where we are different, which is how do you handle that? Right, so courage is not about the absence of fear; it's about taking action in spite of the fear. And uh, yeah, so there's always this thing of like, oh God, if I send it, oh my God, you know, worldwide audience. A lot of things go in your head. And the, and the odd thing is that sometimes those voices are so rational because they're going to uh, talk you out of it. They're going to be very logical and say, oh, well, you shouldn't do this because of these five reasons, clearly, right? So, so yeah, that's the risky thing about fear, that it doesn't show up as fear. You know, you don't, see, you, you don't go around saying to yourself, oh, I'm, I'm afraid of doing this. That's why I'm not doing it. Rarely, if ever. Right, I mean, it's, it's it's a different feeling. It's it's going to talk you out of it. It's going to say it's not worth it. It's going to say a thousand different things to you. So yeah, so celebrate that step, the action that um, followed it. Okay, so look at this. Um, uh, so folks, uh, in Learn Power BI, we had done a presentation about um, basically my book summary of uh, uh, Stephen Few Information Dashboard Design. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that's pretty much my Bible. Uh, maybe I should uh, go beyond that someday. But I don't. I don't know. I, I don't. I don't think we necessarily need to. Uh, I think this is this is a great book. Um, it's like my uh, son. Um, he he's watched the Office series six or seven times, and I think once I asked him, I was like, "Why don't you like try exploring a new series?" And he said, "Why?" <laughs> so yeah, I mean, you know, maybe I should go read more about visualization. But I'm like, "Why?" You know, so. Anyway, I'm just kidding. I mean, you know, hey, learning more is always awesome. But um, yeah, and I have this old edition, uh, uh, and uh, uh, you know, so so we go by that. And uh, in the summary that I've done, it talks about these different ways you can communicate information, and 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 one is kind of the length of the line, and um, and that sort of stuff, right? So length, shape, color, size, and. Um, one of them is is kind of motion, which we're seeing kind of right here, and motion is uh, is quite striking. It definitely grabs our attention, right? So, and if you think about it, wh where is the other place you see? So, I'm gonna I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna make this go away for a second. All right. So, just watch the screen. And I'm not moving my hands, but where do you see motion? It's the cursor, right? Look at this, the cursor right right here. And of course, it's not going to blink when I highlight it, but it's it's blinking. It's a very subtle motion, right? And the cursor is, it's, you know, very thin line, but it's hard to miss. Why? Because of that motion, right? It comes and goes, comes and goes, comes and goes. So our eyes are that, uh, you know, really attracted to it. And of course, you know, a lot of it is kind of human biology, the way our evolution, you know, so we wanted to track uh, the rabbit we were hunting, we wanted to track uh, the, the lion that was approaching us, uh, right? So, so yeah, we were very attuned to motion. So if you go back to the dashboard, uh, talk about first impression, God, that, that really gets you. And uh, all right, so yeah, we're just going to note that. Um, 
Okay, so first impression on the dashboard, I, um, yeah, I got it. It's, yeah, so the, that certainly is what gets attention right away. We'll come back and think about it. And then I'm, I'm kind of noticing color. There's a lot of red. And I understand that it's themed. It's like the, it's for the blood, blood bank, uh, National Blood Service. Uh, but I definitely noticed that. We'll, again, we'll come back and talk about it. Um, and, and what else? So uh, let me make myself scarcer. And, and of course, this is the big, big element here. This is good. Now, I do notice that it is stacked, which is a little bit surprising. Again, I want to delve deeper into it. Like, I'm not sure I quickly understand why it is stacked. Only one of them shows up stacked. I mean, I can see this going on. And um, so again, we, we'll come back and talk about it too. Uh, and our slicer is on the side. So, um, oh boy, <sighs> wow. So, so I think this, I didn't even notice the, the big the big letters here. Usually, uh, so if you talk about, uh, let me bring up kind of one of my one of my own dashboards, right? Okay, so if we go back to the dashboard maker, I hope I have that linked. Um, showcase feedback, sensitive data, how to blur, black. Oh, wow, uh, it's not there. I should have linked to that here, but the video that I'm talking about is uh, is is like a quick primer that I've done of basically what do we look for in a dashboard or how do I design dashboard based on you know, the best practices that I've compiled. So that one is, uh, if you go in here on my channel and you go for uh, my best video start here in the first playlist, I think it's the second or third video. And that is this video, how to create beautiful Power BI dashboards using the Power BI channel, Power, Power BI. Hey, Abigail. Hey, Manish. <laughs> Manish was saying I'm a beginner. <laughs> really, Manish? No, I'm just kidding. Well, if you are, then that's great. But, you know, all right, don't don't use it frivolously. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just uh, paste this link here. You guys can watch it later. Uh, queue it up. All right, queue it up. So, um, so we talk about this power pattern. And the power pattern is really simple. Oh, it's coming up on my other screen. Almost there. Okay, there we go. Oh, well, still loading. <laughs> so the power pattern is high level numbers at the top, then a few breakdowns, um, trends, and a little bit of detail, all right? So so again, you know, high level numbers at the top, big, big, bold numbers, uh, some breakdowns, you know, there's some trends, uh, some more breakdowns here, and just a little bit of detail, right? So don't go crazy with tables. And I always, almost always use this as a starting point. So pretty much 95% of the first dashboard that I built for any customer client is this. In fact, I often ignore, even if they gave me requirements, I ignore that. And that's, I know, I mean, don't, I don't, don't do that, like, you know, just flippantly. But, um, uh, but when I sense that, like, you know, so there's a difference between what they want versus what they need. And as an expert, you, you're going to have to gauge that. You're going to have to kind of balance that. So, um, um, so yeah, so, so I think this, these high level numbers are really bold and big. But I think they're kind of being lost in the sea of red. So uh, I would say that, you know, I get that it's themed. But if we follow Stephen Few's principle, so he talks about data pixel economy, like how many pixels are communicating data. 
and fill color is not data. So right, so so of course you know all of this red, uh, the red here. Oops, let me go blue so it contrasts more. The red here, the red here, and the border. Right, I mean kind of you know er everything is kind of the background it seems. That's not communicating data. So by by law, by you know Stephen Thieu's laws, that should be either eliminated or minimized. So I get that you're trying to kind of theme it, but you know, less is more. You can theme it just by having this a little bit of red just at the top. That would still theme it. That would still be okay. So so I think uh, that's the first thing I would encourage you to change. That yeah, you don't need uh, uh, this sea of red, right? So um, so yeah, so kind of minimize that. You don't don't use it everywhere. Uh, just use it in in a little bit, like maybe in the title here. That's good. Um, yeah, less is more. Or maybe just take it out altogether, even right. So and again, as far as the background goes, generally you want white or slightly off white. And Stephen Few seems to prefer slightly off white. Um, yeah, white sometimes too stark. I do use white almost all the time. Um, I've seen dark uh, dashboards, and and they work too. Um, one of the ones I remember is, uh, I can show quickly, is uh, one of our Pro Plus members, uh, Matthew Carmine. Oh, well, where does this dark dashboard go? Maybe he tweaked it. <laughs> All right, anyway, uh, he had a dark one showcased on his site. It's the same Matthew Carmine who was on our Power BI conference. Okay, so let's uh, continue over here. Uh, nope, wrong one. The, let's go back to this guy. So yeah, so red, I would reduce that. Okay, now uh, I think if we reduce the red, then the numbers are big and bold. I like that. I'm not sure if the last updated is as important uh, because frankly, that's that's not like that's essentially metadata, right? It's data about data. Like when was this data updated, right? I mean, how current is this data? So it's not real data in my mind, right? So it's not that important. It's it's kind of an afterthought. Like you want to pay attention to it. Imagine if, so reports typically going to be refreshed daily, hopefully. So, um, you know, yeah, I mean, people at some point are going to get used to that it's daily. Then, you know, again, in a typical setup, so uh, fathers might be different. Uh, maybe this thing is really important and, and it only updates once in a while or something like that. But uh, but I would not make it that big. I would put it off on, on somewhere there, even here, like some low priority position, may, maybe not right at the bottom, maybe somewhere here. So because I, I think it's less important. So um, so of course, Dashboard Maker, we always talk about that, that this is like your real estate. Think of, think of yourself as a real estate mogul. You have this property of land in New York and and not all properties, not all areas are the same, right? There's downtown, which is really expensive per square foot, and you want to make the best use of it. And then there is the suburb and all that stuff, right? So uh, the general, uh, um, the way the, the, the uh, so uh, uh, generally this area is the most important. And, and, and then it, it kind of decreases as we scan it. And we always scan it in this manner from left to right, and from top to bottom, right? So because we generally read it this way, right? and, and the only place it's going to differ is cultures where their language, they don't read it, uh, like Arabic goes uh, from right to left. So there, maybe you would lay out differently. So this is the most important. So last updated, I uh, would probably squirt it away somewhere on the side. Uh, the otherwise, it's big and bold. And I think if you, if you manage the red issue, then it's going to stand um, on its own, which is awesome. I love the big bold numbers. They just tell me the good stuff. Now, of course, one thing you can do, which actually I haven't done in my dashboard either, not in this one, is can you sh show an indication of whether that's good or bad? And and again, depends on the dashboard. Like for example, year over year change positive. So can I can I do uh, like a small green arrow or something? Or, or sometimes people do it in the green font, and, and of course, if it's down, then you can try to do a, a red arrow or something, and you can X percent. There are a few different visuals. If, if you can, then that's great. Now, of course, in this one, mm, uh, you know, like I, I wouldn't do anything here because we have 
other measures talking about like the change, right? So if that's good or bad. So I would leave those, the first two alone, and then maybe make some indicator here. Uh, again, it's, it's optional. You, you don't have to. But um, uh, um, but if it applies, then you can add that layering a little bit in there. Say, well, schools visited 69. Is that above or below our target, right? But did we, did we have a target for, hey, we wanted to visit 70 schools. We're pretty close. Or we wanted to visit 50 schools and we've gone above and beyond. That's awesome. Or our goal was 100 schools, right? So if you can give that indication, bonus points for that. Don't don't feel like you have to. And again, you can also instead of indicating that here, um, there's no right or wrong, right? I mean, you can you can choose to indicate it in the visual. Maybe use a custom visual or something like that. Or you can um, uh, call it out separately as a separate measure. Right? So you can say, oh, schools visited 69 target was 50 and you know kind of delta is like oh you know plus plus 19 right so uh so you can do that separately depending on how, how you're using space how important it is and so forth or again if it doesn't apply then it doesn't apply right but usually for the big metrics i mean come on they're big for a reason if they're big and important then you most likely do have goals, or at least should have goals. So think about that, food for thought, right? All right, so that's that. Uh, the ticker, um, I'll say, um, so again, it's not kind of good and bad by itself. It, it like, it depends. So um, what is the purpose of the ticker? Because again, this is so dominant that this, this would draw their eyes right away, right? So, um, so of course we see kind of stock symbol and one right that that's where it typically see it right and there the job of the ticker is to communicate information in a pretty compact area so stock tickers in a scrolling right news is going on and at the bottom so so yeah so it can keep scrolling so it can keep feeding you information and of course for usually live information that's kind of changing and I would think that those two things don't quite apply here. Like, I don't think this information is changing. It's being fed real time. So, uh, so yeah, so I would say reconsider. What is the purpose, right? I mean, what are you trying to communicate, um, right? That we have gone to a lot of these different schools. Well, frankly, this doesn't even tell me that because at a time I can only see like three school names and how long do I have to wait to see all of them? So if you really want to communicate that, depending on what kind of report it is, maybe you show them all on a map and you can say, whoa, look at our coverage. Um, right. So, yeah. So just just and again, I mean, you, you don't have to think about or maybe you're trying to show what are the recent schools. Then you say, hey, last five schools we visited. And that's a simple table like this, like this one. Right. So. The last five and boom, you show the list and it's done, right? So you could do that, and I do feel like in this case you have the space for that. And uh, and this one, mm, I'm not sure what that is, so I'll, so I'll, I'll not say anything about that. But but yeah, look at it from that lens. So that's good. Um, uh, the graph here, ooh, uh, So I think this, the color is, is problematic. Yeah, yeah, I think it's problematic. So, so the way the color works is that the way you're using color, it, it, it feels, um, man, I, I can't bring up like Stephen Fuse words, but uh, it feels like you're kind of categorizing it. For example, if we had, if we go back uh, to this dashboard, um, you know, if, if we put accessories and bikes and clothing in different colors, and, and they're different things, so different colors kind of make sense. But when you're trying to indicate like a, like a some, something continuous, which is what I see you're trying to do, it's like, oh, less than 500, 500 plus, 1,000 plus, 1,500 plus, 2,000 plus, you're better off just using a, a shade of the same color, right? So you can, you know, it goes from the lightest shade to the darkest shade of whatever color you choose. And that would be a lot more effective, a lot more effective, because right now it's it's a little bit confusing. So 
So you, you try the shade of the same color. Um, and I would say don't feel like it has to be red. I mean, I know it's, it's kind of themed and all, but uh, so it, it, because red red is, is slightly tricky color and because red, I, I know, I mean, this is blood banks so or maybe you use red everywhere, but uh, yeah, it also indicates kind of danger and stuff like that. So um, it's it's okay to be neutral. It's okay to be gray and, and you know, have shades of gray, right? <laughs> um, and by the way, when you do shades of color, you're actually lucky because I, I think, from what I remember, Stephen Few says exactly this, that shades of color, we can differentiate uh, five different shades of the same color quite well. If you had 10 different tiers, then it wouldn't work. Then it, yeah, then, then th you, you can't do it. Then, yeah, you're going to have to, I don't know, group them together, show it differently, show just in a table. You, you couldn't quite show that in the graph. One thing that I would comment is that uh, this is a bar chart, and I always have trouble keeping kind of straight, um, uh, you know, kind of which one is bar, which one is column. And then, then I thought that column is like a column as in a pillar supporting, and I always think of those uh, old Roman buildings with those big, huge pillars. So now I can keep them straight. So bar chart, and um, mm, I think I think uh, this is the right use. So, so if you have things. Um, kind of vertically, I explained this better inside my course, I'm kind of making a mess of it, but uh, depending on the space you have and the layout you have and so forth, one or the other does work better, bar or column. So I think it is, you use the right one here. Um, now the fact that um, it is scrolling, I don't know if that's good or bad. So generally, for, for the first page, we don't want a scrolling element because it's a summary page, right? I mean, uh, it's the it's it's the view of the whole company, um, well, in your case, in your organization, at a high level. Now, the challenge is that scrolling involves action. I mean, unless I scroll down, I would not see it. And, you know, I mean, anybody who's designed dashboards for executives, uh, the higher up you go in the food chain, the dumber it needs to be. Because, not because they're not smart, they're pl plenty smart, but often they're busy. And they need to get their stuff right away, right? So you gotta really dump it down, really make it easy. So, um, so I would say as, as a first thing, you know, I would I would look to avoid it, right? So, and and you have lots of schools. Can they be grouped? Can they be grouped by county they're in, or state they're in, country they're in, something like that, right? And 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 if you do that, then you can you have an opportunity to show other elements on the same dashboard. So the first dashboard should be like bam. Right? I mean, this is the whole view, right? So so if we did that, if we compacted that, and then it could fit probably in here, in this small space. And then uh, maybe we could have like then a separate graph on a school level, or we could leave that on a separate page, have that as a drill down or something like that. All right, so, so oh, here here's a summary, and you see it right away, and then there's a scrolling thing, uh, maybe a column chart, which you can scroll if you want to see all the schools. Or we could show other metrics. We could we could show whatever is interesting to you. So I'm thinking about kind of blood donation. What would be um, uh, key? Uh, maybe the size of enrollment and all that stuff. Um, you know what? <laughs> this one I'm at a loss. Usually I I think about a data set and I'm like I've always worked with something. Um, uh, we'll, we'll see, right? So so yeah, you you would have yourself the opportunity to show a lot of other rich elements to paint a whole picture, and that's going to be awesome. All right, so one thing I do like is slicers to the right. So again, the order of importance is generally, this is the most important, and then the order kind of goes down at this till uh, the stuff at the bottom is the least important. That's the least important area, and that's where I like to stick uh, icons and company logos, not uh, here, which is what I'd done in, in my um, in my course, actually, I'm embarrassed. Sorry, guys. So I had I taken the, uh, uh, the 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 logo and stuck it up in the most important corner. It's just a waste of space, right? So a waste of real estate. Uh, so slicers, they're not data. So again, if it's not data, then according to Stephen Few, we're gonna minim uh, eliminate or minimize. Eliminate is the first step, but you know we can't eliminate this. So we're gonna keep it in a less uh, minimize it. So which is in a less priority position. So yep, it's there. And of course, um, yeah, so that's good. I, I like that. I mean, this, that's just awesome. Uh, I'm not really sure 
if this is needed, at least in this case, because I can read it in, in there as well. Like, you know, in room size A, it says 2000 plus. So um, if you were just showing A, B, C, D, E, then you would need definition, which would be kind of weird. Like, oh, because now you're, you have to, your audience has to work extra hard. They have to go back and forth. They have to read A and they say, oh, A means this and so forth. So, um, so yeah, so again, I feel like, uh, uh, yeah, that's good. All right, so we're going to pause here. Maybe we'll come back to Fadil's and check out his other sheets. But I want to just uh, check uh, maybe a few of the comments, see what's going on here. Uh, so Heather, yep, yeah, so yep, <laughs> I, I, I'm, that's my guess as well, that red is being used because of blood, which uh, which again, I mean, it, it's okay, but I think that can be used kind of just with a light touch. Um, yeah, Leo, spot on. I was thinking the same thing, that yeah, red can mean different things. Um, and, 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 you, and you never know, right? I mean, maybe there are people in the organization who have been there for a long time. Maybe there are people who are stepping in from uh, traffic control, <laughs> right, or, or some other industry, and, and, and they may not, like, you know, they may go, whoa, what's, you know, it's, yeah, so, um, so, yeah, so you can do it a little bit. Um, Heather's saying, uh, the description indicates the color indicators. Oh, can we change the marker? Oh, Nathan had a question. Can we change marker, color, and ticker? Um, yeah, so I think Heather is right. Um, so that's good. Heather, thanks for helping out. Awesome. So let me check in with our folks on the phone. Oh, I can't find my mouse. Okay, there we go. Uh, so, so I know, folks, the last I checked, I didn't have, uh, so I only have Fadl, Ricardo, and Gabriel. But if on the phone you, you, you have a dashboard, if you send it in, or heck, I mean, you know, <laughs> if you want to share your screen and, and have something to show, and now would be a great time. And or also if you have any other thoughts about this. All right. OK, let's, let's move on and uh, let's bring up uh, one of the other ones. So Father, we may come back to this. Thank you for sending this again. And the last time you had uh, sent this in, you had said that this wasn't quite live yet. I think it was going to be reviewed and and approved. And I wonder what's the status now. It's uh, like how are things is this is this being used um, already? Uh, I I I hope it is because man, I mean, clearly you've put in a lot of work in this. Yeah, Jonathan has has a has a suggestion. Yeah, use use a light touch with color. So he's he's going for pastels. That's good. All right. So so Father, let, let us know. I wonder what's kind of going on with the organization. Yeah. So good points. Mike is saying talking about I think this uh, this section here. So let's move on to our next one, Ricardo. So Ricardo and Gabriel, if you are here, uh, let us know. Type something in the chat box. I think I'd seen, uh, oh God, I think I'd seen Ricardo earlier. Uh, so Ricardo wrote in that uh, he used to work at Barlow Ward Equipment in Angola, who represents Caterpillar Machinery. Worked as a market analyst, that's awesome. And one of my personal projects was to create a dynamic dashboard in Excel. So this comes from that Excel. So this is cat as in caterpillar machinery dashboard. I'm opening it up right now, Ricardo, if you're listening. Thanks for sending this in. <laughs> All right. And I haven't seen this one. So we'll see how it goes. So while that's coming up, Folks, uh, I was starting off this session with talking about the motivation behind this. And uh, it's kind of shifted. Earlier it was more of a makeover, but I feel like the showcase part, I want to kind of emphasize that. You know, do good work, tell great stories. Uh, and, 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 and now, of course, I've had the privilege of working with 1,000 plus students in our Learn Power BI family. And, and uh, those who know me know that for the past several years, I've been obsessed with breakthrough success. And, and um, I started off teaching Power BI, and my tagline used to be that Power BI changed my life, and I'm here to change yours. But what I started to see was that's, that's, that wasn't happening. I mean, they were getting good at Power BI, but 
you know, sometimes their life wasn't changing. Sometimes it was, you know, getting worse. And it's like, oh, yeah, I'm busier than ever, right? I mean, I'm still stuck in the data dungeon, still cranking out reports. So I realized there was something else, and I stumbled onto it by accident, actually. Um, so, yeah, I was the same thing, was in corporate America for many years, got through layoffs, so all of that, the dot-com bust and this, that, struggled through. Uh, I mean, worked in great companies, um, AOL, Washington Mutual, Microsoft, and others. But yeah, the career kind of went nowhere, which uh, um, yeah, which I wasn't too happy about. And then when I got Power BI, I was so excited about this that I started sharing my story. I started doing these brown bags, and I just couldn't contain it. Like I have to share this with other others, and that catapulted me. And and of course, I missed that lesson. Uh, but then when I looked back, looked at what my successful students were doing, that's been the common thread got to step up and talk about your work, right? And it's easier than you can ever imagine. So these folks are, of course, sending in Power BI dashboards like BBIX files. But as we say in our, in our, in our uh, thing here is that, uh, you know, I mean, that's the number one thing. We say, oh, I have sensitive data. Uh, and, of course, the first thing that I say is, oh, yeah, well, has anybody in your industry ever written a blog or uh, done spoken at a conference or written a book about their work? Yeah, they have. How do they do it, right? So there's a way, find that way. And of course, the simplest way is you take a screenshot and you blur out sensitive information. And I have a whole video on how to do that. And so, so yeah, that's the simplest way. But of course, these folks are kind enough to send in dashboards. All right, so first again, uh, let's celebrate it. So Ricardo, again, I mean, kudos for doing the work, right? Kudos for doing the work and kudos for taking the action. Say, hey, I'm, I'm ready to start talking about, right? Start sharing the story of my work. And uh, uh, so I really enjoy it when uh, these submissions come from our students because they're on the phone and they can actually tell the story. So that's great practice, my friends. And frankly, again, I mean, we, we're, we're kind of building this as a ladder. I don't know if I can, uh, I'll try to bring that up, but uh, we, we want to give you kind of step by step, like the stairway to heaven, <laughs> something like that, right? So, so, um, so where you, uh, where you start with something simple and 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 you know just something really easy and then you go keep going all the way till presenting at the worldwide conference why not right so where where is that thing there we go so yeah so so the uh series uh so those who know um uh, yeah if you go to learnpowerbi.com slash wall or look under free resources for the wall of inspiration and uh, folks, I visit this wall too when I need inspiration, right? And, and the key thing is, so um, is when you look at this, you can either go, oh, great, good for them, they're so lucky, but I could never do that. Or say, well, great, that's an example of what's possible. That means I can do it too, right? So same thing, but you can take it two different ways. And that's going to change, decide your destiny, frankly, right? So, um, so yeah, so, I mean, uh, so, yeah, so we, we do a lot of stuff here. Uh, hashtag win. So that's the first step where they share kind of the hashtag win inside the group. Really safe, you know, or group. Uh, next step, hopefully, we can take is dashboard showcase. Um, next, we do kind of talk about BI, um, like a whole session dedicated to them. Uh, we do have master classes and, of course, Power BI conference. And, you know, we'll see. We'll, we'll, we'll maybe have more. So that's the idea. So let's come back here. And yeah, kudos to uh, Ricardo for uh, doing the work, sending it in. Uh, so first impressions, oh man. You know, so we were talking about color, but <laughs> don't we all love yellow? I don't know, I, 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 well, I, well, you can see, right? I mean, that's the back wall and, you know, you see the curtains here. Um, and um, um, I'll just share this with you guys. I, I, we bought a new car, so my son, he turned 16 and he's driving now. Uh, and I gave him a choice, I say, I, you know, that he could get a new car and I would keep the old one, but he, he wanted to drive the old one. So I'm like, okay, cool. So we got a new car and I think I bought it just because I found a car in yellow and black. And, and I think it's a good car, but I think I pretty much bought it. And I saw it. I'm like, oh man, I want that. So, so yeah. So, um, you know what? I, I don't mind if you keep this background, even though Stephen few may not like it. Okay, there's a slight problem though, so I think black is popping out, but uh, the white isn't, and, and certainly the gray in the slicer boxes really isn't popping out. So you can see here, right? So if we 
if you zoom in, right, this gray is kind of fading away and there's, there's not enough contrast. So do something about that, but generally I would say remove the background or minimize it. Maybe you can do that, right? So again, think about it if, if, the, if you do want the yellow. I mean, there's already a little bit of yellow here, but maybe you can like have a border around this. Maybe that's enough. And of course, we talked about this logo, that this is the most important position. If you can uh, reposition it down in this corner or, or this corner, you know, think about that, right? So, uh, and, and I would say, yeah, maybe you can definitely flip this dashboard. So the slicers are less important, so they can go in the less important position. So that could be an easy switch, just, you know, kind of flip it, right? So just drag these guys over there, drag everything to the right. Um, all right, so we're gonna not going to talk about the yellow much. <laughs> Love it. Uh, let's see. Um, so let's talk about the dashboard. And, and, and you see, so if you ignore the yellow, how do I, how do I collapse this? Oh, there. Wow. Hmm. Um, so if you ignore the yellow, now this is an example of what I was saying. Well, actually, this one is kind of different. So um, uh, we'll talk about that in a little bit, but let's first start with the layout, right? And hey, you won me over with this one too, mate. So Ricardo, good work there. So again, high level numbers at the top, right? Uh, let me use blue, uh, you can see. So high level numbers at the top, Right, and then we have uh, well, this is a trend actually. Uh, this is also a trend, and uh, we have a breakdown, and uh, you know, uh, breakdown top five, and top five. Right, so so yeah, breakdown. Uh, so love it, love it. I mean, I, hey, uh, this is almost out of the textbook, right? So this is exactly what I say, kind of power pattern, high level numbers, uh, breakdown trends, a little bit of detail, right? So that's brilliant. And let me see. Uh, so yeah, so this is good. Now, obviously, you want to. Uh, so I think there is there is a precision problem here, and actually, I have the problem too. Uh, so if you look at it here, um, earlier, actually, in inside my course, I'm showing this as units, like to the dollar. And somebody called out and they said, "Avi, I mean, if you're talking millions, you never show it to the dollar because it doesn't make sense, right?" Um, so uh, so for your case, you like the decimals don't make sense. In fact, maybe you can show it in thousands, um, right? So, uh, or even million, even maybe 296.7 million or something like that, right? So, so yeah, so think about that. And of course, the one problem that it's gonna fix is this guy with the dot, dot, dot. That's that's not cool, right? I mean, that that's, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that doesn't look good. So, so uh, fix that, uh, get rid of the dot, dot, dots, but overall show it in thousands or millions or something like that. And that would work well. Mm. And again, uh, that one is optional. You can you can do like a little bit of an indicator if you want, right? I mean, like I mean, green is good, kind of red is bad, something like that. Just a little bit. And in, in this case, it, it's optional. You, you don't need it. Sometimes, if, if you only have space to just show the number, then it's helpful to say, can I can I just squeeze in using a custom visual or something? Uh, the KPI visual, and maybe even the inbuilt ones, sh a little more information about whether that's good or bad, right? So if you don't have space for the other descriptive metrics. Um, so this is a trend by year, by year, and this is a trend by month. Got it. And wow, this is a lot severe. So um, I'm expecting this is interactive. So 2015 shows me that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is uh, this is this is good. I'm just wondering. I'm just thinking out loud, like in a real data set. Um, like, would it make sense? So th this makes sense, right? But then it seems the monthly trend is aggregated over all of these years, right? And frankly, what I'm feeling is that I would want to see like the yearly trend, that's great, but then I would want to see the monthly trend for the most recent year, right? Or the last 12 months or something like that, I, I feel. that That's kind of what I'm feeling, right? So um, yeah, I wouldn't want to see over all these years because yeah, I don't. Yeah, I mean that. That's um, that's what I'm feeling. Mm, what do you guys think?
All right, Jonathan is saying, yep, blur out the dashboard, submit it. Yeah, mate, it's going to be awesome. Submit it. Uh, and if you're a student, join us on the call. Tell your story. The world needs to hear it. <laughs> uh, one of the biggest challenges that um, we face, um, well, for better or worse, is this this problem of, um, I don't know how to say it, but basically self-worth, right? I mean, I talk to a lot of people who are amazing, but... Um, yeah, you know, so so um, if you're feeling that, please don't, right? I mean, come in here. It's a safe platform. We're not going to kind of roast you. We're going to celebrate you first. And, and yeah, so if you have this feeling, oh, yeah, but, you know, yeah, mine isn't good enough, right? You know, it's, no, no, you, you, it's always good enough, mate, because you're all good enough. All right, so, um, so a top five uh, future by product, by client. Um, oh, that's interesting. So, so that the label for these two are the same by client, but the data seems to be different. Maybe there's something there which is obviously lost in lost in translation for me. I think this is by vendor or something like that. Okay, cool. So, so, so maybe the, this header I feel like does need to be changed. You know, so, uh, so that might be like a miss or something. Uh, by product, um, yeah. So this is uh, this is good. Now, of course, the challenge that you have is, man, if the second one is blank, that can be embarrassing, <laughs> right? So, <laughs> you know, you you might want to kind of look into that and see what that what that blank is. Um, and handle that uh, elegantly if you can. And you got a long, long tail. So if I do have a long tail, then often it's not, it doesn't make sense to kind of show that tail. So what I do is I would show uh, kind of the top five, not counting the blank. So after sales, 140, D6, 320, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then I'll, or maybe the top 10. So keep going, like how our 10 is. And then you show an other. And the other is going to include all of this, and you're also going to throw in the blank in here because blank is blank, right? So uh, now, of course, that is fun because you want the other to appear at the bottom. Ooh, that's a fun challenge, right? You don't want it alphabetical because that would be weird. <laughs> other would just pop up in the middle depending on which are the top 10. How do you control that? I'm pretty sure it's possible. Frankly, nothing's like popping up in my head right away. Uh, I mean, obviously, if you control the order, there is, there is, um, and it's not alphabetical. It's not by value. We can't do it by that, right? So think about it. Other could be higher or lower than one of these amounts. And obviously, in this case, if the other gets blank, boy, it's going to be, you know, higher than everything than else. But we do want the other to show at the bottom. How do we do that? So we cannot do it sorting alphabetically what well, you could trick it i guess you could put a z in front of it or something that might solve it well actually no that still wouldn't solve it because you cannot sort it alphabetically you you want it in descending order oh boy this is yeah you, you, this is a this is a good one this is a good one guys um because again it's it's a real business scenario i think i'm pretty sure i've tackled it and it's uh it's simple to state but the solution is not so obvious so you can't do it um, by value, by descending. You certainly can't do it alphabetical. So, um, man, this would require some heavy lifting. So the only thing that's left in your arsenal is this the the sort by column thing. But yeah, that would that would take some work. Um, man, maybe there isn't an elegant solution. That's a good one. I'll think about that. Uh, top five uh, by this. This looks good. Um, Hey, I mean, Stephen Few does not like pie charts, hence I don't like pie charts. And this donut chart is pretty much a pie chart made worse. <laughs> right? and, and it's okay, I've used pie charts, donut charts, but um, as long as you realize that, what are the problems with it? Frankly, it's not very effective in communicating data. And um, it's often highlighted by the fact that people feel like they need labels in there. And that's the case here too, without labels, this would be impossible to read, right? So, and, and that's the challenge. Um, so we are really good, as Stephen Fee talks about, some attributes are pre-attentive. We actually recognize that even before kind of it hits the brain, one of them is kind of this length. And, and we are very, very good at that. 
in fact i remember reading that we can we can detect up to a difference of as small as two pixels so if one line is shorter than the other by two pixels we can still kind of detect it uh, but for this one uh, the pie chart or the donut chart either it forces you to judge the angle or the area which not only are we bad at that but we don't realize how bad we are at that. So you ask somebody to read a pie chart, which is kind of close without labels, and you say, okay, what do you think? And they would give you their answer. And then you say, how confident are you? And they would be really confident. They would say, ah, eh, 90%. But they would be wrong much more than that, right? So you see the challenge there. I mean, right? so, so you ask, so, so that can be tricky. Uh, uh, so yeah, so be careful there. and. Sometimes we just want to put in variety there, but maybe it's not worth it. Maybe a bar column chart, something simple, simpler element uh, would work better generally. Um, if you are going to do this, certainly make the labels bigger, but uh, we're already running out of space here, so that's a challenge. I would say really change it to a bar column chart. And, um, well, let's just see it, right? So you're seeing it now, and, and you know, I can I can kind of make out that, yep, this is the biggest element, the blue blank. <laughs> that's another problem to solve. Uh, but if we just change it, let's say, to... Um, to uh, what is it column chart let's just see how it looks man I'm liking it already and so I <laughs> accept the blank part we gotta fix fix that something there um, all right cool so so that's great that's great um, and again uh, Ricardo awesome thank you for sharing it uh, thank you for stepping up and folks yeah keep telling us stories so I started off uh, as an employee signed Microsoft I started doing brown bags you can do that starting off if you're working nine to five and that that's absolutely the way to go um and and so as part of telling your story so what i saw was the folks who kind of started really kind of rising up was they they broke down the walls within the organization and, and again for me it happened by accident it wasn't by design because frankly i had no clue what i was doing i was just passionate about power bi so i got lucky you, you can learn and you can do this by design. So you now you know, well, I'm going to tell you two things, right? One is kind of start sharing a story. And as I did that, what happened was that people across different groups started reaching out to me. But you don't have to necessarily wait for that. You can reach out. And again, just, you know, they, they call it the informational meeting. Just sit down. And of course, so folks in this journey, and frankly, you know, they talk about networking and all this stuff. A key lesson is that always go with the intent of helping them. Sounds kind of weird. You know, I know when I was back then, I was I would set up a meeting with somebody. I was like, oh, how can they help me? I always went with that mindset, and that's not how it works. You go with the intent of helping them, and great things happen, right? So, the, yeah, I mean, you go with that mindset, and, and, and they would, like, roll out the red carpet for you. It, it's it's weird. I don't, I don't know. It's it's something metaphysical. It's something there, right? So I just know it works. So, so yeah, so you meet with them. With, with no selfish intentions, no like, oh, this is going to boost my career. You can't carry around that stuff in your head. I just want to help people. I just want to help people. I just want to help people. So, so yeah, so if you're in sales, go talk to somebody in marketing, operations, support. So I was in the operations group, and, yep, I started talking to sales. And I was like, yep, what do you need? Yeah, what are the challenges? What are the data sets? And then people would stop by my door and say, oh, Avi, I have this data set. Can you take a look? I'm like, hey, take a seat, right? And it grew from there. So, right, so you, you tell your story, and it becomes more and more powerful my phone somewhere and uh, that's gonna be phenomenal right and of course if you're freelancing then uh, then you're gonna do that through your clients but uh, um, sometimes people are like oh I'm, 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 I'm too busy for sharing my story bit uh, and that's okay that's that's your choice it's like no I'll be, I'm, I'm too busy doing the work but the challenge that's gonna happen is that folks there's a one path where you're in control of your life and there's the other path where you're not in control of your life. It's you, you're, you know, at the whim of the currents, wherever the currents take you. And man, I've been thrown around all my life, right? I mean, reorg happened. Oh, we're going this way. Uh, my manager changed. Oh, we're going that way. Oh, you got laid off. <laughs> well, that sucks. You know, which road, which road to take, right? So, um, so yeah. So, um, and the other path can be where you're in control. It's not for everybody. But um, I'll tell you, I've, I've gotten used to it. Feels awesome. Okay, cool. So let's see. Let's check in. How is everybody doing the phone? Any thoughts, comments? Um, any dashboards you pulled out of? Pulled out. Like, hey, 
it will go to share. All right, jump in. You can unmute yourself. Just talk anytime. Uh, let's see what they're saying on YouTube. Yeah, so Heather's saying it's, it's worth noting in some data sets blanks are ex expected. That's a good point. Uh, I, I think it's mostly awkward to show that as blanks, though. I always, you know, squirmed a little bit, you know, because, um, yeah, I mean, inevitably, you know, the manager who we're representing to is like, what is that, right? And then you got to go in there. So, uh, so what, what, if it's, I would say if it is like blank means something, if it's like, oh, it's not yet assigned, then put that label on there. Put that label on there, not yet assigned. That's going to be simple. That's going to be simple for everybody. Uh, but that's a good point. Uh, Leo, Leo is saying, I sent you one. Oh, hmm. I haven't gotten it yet. Was this just now? Oh, well, if you send now, I'll wait for it. Uh, what else? Would it be better to see why they're blanks? Oh, absolutely. So, yeah, I mean, you got to understand that. I mean, yeah, so uh, when I'm starting to work with a client, of course, often what I first do is that I just pull in the data set in Power BI and I just kind of explore and just kind of have fun. I said, just kind of figure out like, what's uh, what's important, what's not, that kind of stuff. And, 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 and of course, in the query editor, uh, what is that thing called where it gives you the information about the columns? And it would, die, uh, God, I, I can't remember now, but um, uh, it, it tells you that, oh, this column has these many blanks and that sort of stuff, these many unique values. And uh, of course, all of that, we had to do it kind of manually. I mean, you know, every column I would drag into a graph and then figure it out or something, a pivot table. But now you can look at that in the query editor and see that really quick. So that's insightful. And and, and I would, so uh, so not all columns are equally important, right? So so of course, if you look at, if you look at um, uh, this data, data model, uh, let's go here. So obviously when I'm exploring the data, then I wouldn't have this data structure. So ignore the data structure. Uh, but I would have these tables. So what I'm looking for when I'm looking at their data set, so, so the data, by the way, I mean, sometimes people tell me is that, oh, Avi, uh, I mean, I know you talk about the structure of this, um, well, star schema or data lookup tables, but my data, my source data isn't like that. And I'm like, I think nobody's is, right? I mean, it, it, it's Power BI expects its own structure and you would almost never find it in your source data because either source data is kind of a messy set of Excel files and so forth, which is certainly not going to have the structure, or your source data is going to be a database, which is going to be a third normal form, which is not this, which is different. And even a data warehouse, that's your best shot. Now, the biggest mistake people make with a data warehouse is that they go in there and import pretty much all of it. Don't do that. Just start with one data table, one fact table, and go from there, right? So less is more. And even sometimes even data warehouses, they're not like the right shape for Power BI, especially kind of when it comes to the lookup table. So, so when I'm looking at a data set, no matter where it is, I know I can transform it into this shape, but I'm, I'm, I'm looking at a table and I'm going to say, is this a data table or is this a lookup table, right? So I'm, I'm looking for those, or is this a lookup table hidden inside a data table, right? So I'm, I'm kind of making that thing in my head. So that's the first thing that I would see. And then of course I would see, oh, is this, is this a key? Is this a field that would let me, uh, oops, let's do that again. Is this, a key that would let me connect the data table with the lookup table. And if that's the case, and I'm in the lookup table, then I'm very, very interested in this field having blanks. Why? Because blanks are not allowed. Blanks are not allowed. It's not going to let you make that connection in the lookup table. So I'm going to have to eliminate blanks in there. So I'm like, God, this is supposed to be a lookup table. Why does it have blanks? So I would, I would probably go back and ask the clients, like, this table really shouldn't have blanks. What, what do blanks mean? Can I really ignore them? And ignoring blanks is, is risky, though, uh, because there's this concept called defensive programming. So you're programming not just for the data you have right now, but you're also programming for the data you may have in the future. So imagine the client said, oh, yeah, the blanks, they're unneeded. Yeah, I know what they are. Ignore them. Well, so blanks can be ignored now, but what if the ch state changed in the future? In, in, in future, another row came in, and it, it, was, it had sales territory key blank, but... You, if you excluded it, you would be in big trouble. 
And and again, I mean, in this case, it kind of is not making sense, but there have been scenarios like that. So so you got to be a little careful. So good point there. Yeah, blanks absolutely uh, investigating. Oh, you had you just emailed it. Oh, okay, cool. Um, yeah, folks. So so if you just email it to us, that's cool. Uh, but you're gonna have to let me know because uh, uh, the way we do this is uh, is uh, well, really simple right now. Uh, is if you go to the dashboard stuff. So Leo, I'll, I'll pull yours up, and you click submit your entry. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we we uh, we got a few comments now uh, on the on the cut uh, the yellow uh, dashboard. Yeah, maybe uh, in the in the chat uh, of the group. Um, oh yeah, man, call it out. What yeah, do you see? What are you talking a, about? There's, the, there's <laughs> no like title. Is that is yeah? Is is the yellow? There's no title. So uh, if you yeah. don't want a title, then you can lose the yellow bar because then you have more space um, on it. Yeah. Oh, Frank, yeah, one. thanks for calling out, mate. Yeah, so uh, yeah. that's a good one. Um, and the other yeah. one was the, uh -huh. the double year. The, you have years in the filter and years in a column uh, uh, in the column bar uh, chart. Good point, and, yeah. Yeah, and so if you are filtering, you already see in the KPIs above, you will see the grand totals. So it's, it's like double, um, you, you lose space for information. Yeah. Good point. Anything else? That, wow. Yeah, there was one. And I'm, I'm glad somebody's uh, reading all the comments. <laughs> Certainly not. Yeah. Me. Yeah. And we we also um, asked. Uh, yeah, if you do the above, you already said that hey, in millions, but you also want to see something like a target. And if you don't have, um, uh, if you only show the difference, then also um, a, a presentation. So the absolute and the presentation, or you have to uh, both. But now mm. now is not saying uh, something. If you I, I didn't, Do you know what I mean? I, I didn't get that. So, um, say say that part again. No, you don't. Um, at top, you don't have an, any uh, targets, a norm, and uh, ah. so you see the realization, but you don't see what is the goal. Yeah. So, you can better or or uh, only present the uh, difference. Yeah. Absolute and in person persons. Yep. Yep. Or yep. you can uh, do the both. Uh, the realization and the target. Yeah. Oh, good stuff. Good stuff. Uh, 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 Frank, hey, while you have, have you have you in the line, hey, uh, go ahead and introduce yourself a little bit, mate. Yeah, yeah tell tell everybody about you. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, yeah, well, I'm Frank. I'm from the, the Holland. I'm uh, working in a hospital as a finance manager and also uh, introduced Power BI. And I'm also have my own company started uh, 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 this this month official, but already a few months in uh, preparation. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm also a Power BI consultant now. Awesome. And I come from the Netherlands. That's great. And uh, what's the best way to get hold of you? LinkedIn, is that, is that good? Yeah, LinkedIn is best, yes. Okay, awesome. So that's Frank, folks. By the way, Frank, uh, if he sounds familiar, because he was moderating some of our sessions on the Power BI conference as well. And uh, I'm, I'm so glad that he's kind of carried on with that role here. So. Uh, uh, hey, we're gonna give a shout out to Frank and uh, put his uh, connect with Frank. So I'm gonna put that in the in the chat here. So yeah, so um, healthcare definitely connect with him. Barbie yeah, and finance people. Yeah, finance. awesome. There we go. All right. So yeah, that's uh, that's Frank. And I don't think he has his webcam on right now, but you can see he's a good-looking guy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. So, um, so let's go over uh, title. That's that's a good point. I'll say that I'm I'm not like I sometimes do create stuff which doesn't have a title, uh, and and it depends on the scenario. Uh, for example, if I'm creating for somebody and they look at it kind of daily, and I'm like, well, I, yeah, they don't need to see the title. Um, and, and yeah, so it, so again, it's it's rare. Mostly, I do put the title, but um, but yeah, sometimes. I, I don't and um, uh, and of course if you have like multiple pages then pretty much you need a title because each page needs to identify and so forth uh, yeah so in rare case I leave a title but I think in this case yeah a title would be great um, uh, now the slicer on that and again it, it slightly depends uh, so this is not it's not like I have never done it and usually the, the, the reason why I would put a slicer and in, in here Often would be that what I talk about uh, when I talk about this power pattern. Uh, yeah, power pattern. And and what I do sometimes is 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 uh, and this is a great approach by the way, is to you take a pattern and sometimes you know we show different kind of 
fails of uh, slices of data. Like imagine we're showing kind of sales and then the other page was showing support tickets and the other page was showing, I don't know, ad spend or something, right? But what you can do is you can take the pattern and keep it consistent across those report pages, which is an extremely powerful technique because it really helps the user. Because if you go to the new one and it looks completely different, and I, I have no idea what I'm gonna find, find in this page. Oh, great, it look, does look similar. So shipping report, right, great. So, so I, I, imagine if they went from this to uh, you know something completely different, something that looked like this, right? And, and it, yeah, so they have to reorient themselves each time they switch from one page to the other or something like that, right? So if you keep it the consistent format, like, yep, sales, and users always know that you know they're gonna find the big numbers at the top, the ones that matter the most. They're gonna find some breakdowns, some trends, and some detail. It really locks them down. And either it's gonna be consistent, like you're gonna say, oh, this corner always shows sales by country. Or sometimes it's gonna be different breakdown because that breakdown may not apply. Maybe, I don't know, like if you have like sales report and then like the next, so you have finance on one and then you have HR report on the next page. But, you know, obviously finance, like sales, you might have it by country, but employees, you maybe all of your employees are just in one country. So you're obviously not going to show employees by country, but you're going to show, show something else there. So you're going to take that same spot and, and take the same area and say employees by department or something like that, right? So you can switch things around, but you keep the same pattern uh, and that really helps a user. Uh, so long story here, what I'm trying to get to is that sometimes I would have the slicers kind of exactly consistent. And if you go back here, uh, imagine if we had, um, oops, not this one, this guy. I mean, uh, so this was Fadl and Fadl had this, had this you know, kind of set of slicers here, it's quite possible that he will uh, consist consistently keep it on the other report pages. And I have no idea, I haven't looked at that, but but if he did, then then you can, you know, you, want, you know what I'm saying, right? I mean, then you can, it's okay to kind of duplicate because you want to stay consistent. So that's one scenario. Maybe there would be other scenarios too. And of course, somebody can argue that slicers are easier to use, they're more kind of intuitive, like people see it, and if the contrast wasn't bad, then you kind of know. So, so that may be another reason where why you may keep that um or you may not ooh ooh slicers have another big advantage which is this and and what i'm going to show you is possible without slicers but it's hard uh so when it when you think about what's easy or hard for the user to do i think of two attributes one is discoverability is it discoverable and is it intuitive discoverability means that they can find it for themselves. Because obviously, I mean, we're talking about self-serve BI, I don't want to be there to hold their hand, right? I mean, you know, yeah. So, and, and, and you know, I, 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 and, and so uh, we work with the ProPlus group, uh, Frank included, and um, so the uh, independent consultants, and we have this thing where we do where we record a lot of videos, and we would record instructional videos and all that stuff, which is good, but in a way, it's also a failure. You know, so of course, I'm being a little bit dramatic. Like, if you need a video to explain something, then you know, I mean, you failed already. No, just kidding. But you get my point, right? So, so if you if they need instructions to, uh, you know, uh, to to find something, then you gotta watch out because most people may not find it, right? So, is it discoverable? Is it intuitive? So, with the slicer, I can click on 2015, right? I can do that, and then I can say. Uh, cool, show me after sales. And now I'm seeing 2015 after sales. And I am not sure why why this doesn't filter this. <laughs> okay, I'll worry about that later, right? But, but you get this. Now, this is possible without the use of slicers as well. But I think it's not very discoverable. So, I don't know if you know. Well, but, but yeah, so you click 2015. And then you and you hold down control button, which you can't see my keyboard. And then you hold down the control button and click this. So there is a way, but I mean, imagine if I didn't know that trick. I wasn't. It's not discoverable, right? There's, there's, it's just what, what am I going to do? Like, yeah, unless I was a monkey and I was smashing the keyboard at random, <laughs> you know? Yeah, it, you you would never discover it. There is, frankly, I would say zero chance of discoverability. So that means you're going to have to tell them. Which again, I mean, you can, you can balance. So there's no right or wrong answer. So slicers have a slight edge there as well. 
so uh, so yeah, that that may be another reason why you say well, you know you, you want them to have complete flexibility. So of course in this case I can do um, uh, you know kind of uh, 2015 after sales, and then I can click on something else like this guy Dina Dinamina Portela. All right, cool. So so good points. Uh, good points there. I think I missed one there. Uh, let's see anything else. Uh, James is saying, how do you get M for millions after the number without corrupting other visuals? That's a good question. So there, there are two two ways of doing it. I think maybe three. Uh, so let's come back here. And and actually, yeah, this is not my favorite way, but unfortunately. To, to the next level, it's, it's kind of harder. So I can go in here, and in the display, uh, what is it? So you can change the display units. So either you can say auto, or you can choose millions, billions, trillions. Now, so right now, it's at 16 million, right? And I can choose millions, and it's not going to change. It's six, still 16M. But the problem is this. When you choose specifically millions, now the thing is that these dashboards are interactive. So what if somebody clicks on clothing, which is you know really, really small? What happens now? Well, you get zero million, right? Which is not fun. So what if this was auto? So let's change back to auto. Uh, so instead of millions, if I said auto, and let's try that again. So now it's an auto, and now if I select clothing, there you go, 323K. It's much better. So auto is good. The only problem that I have with is that when I was working in finance, folks, they usually like to show it with a decimal. Is that possible? Maybe it is possible. Maybe I'm just, you know, I just haven't caught up. So um, value decimal places, and can I say one? All right, all right, okay, cool. So, uh, hey, yeah, that would make my finance folks happy. So they wanted to see the decimal. And if I click on clothing, you know, yeah, so it, it shows the decimal. God, that was so easy. I, I, I swear, I don't think this feature was there earlier. So <laughs> clearly, this is something that I struggled with earlier, which um, you don't need to struggle with now. Uh, so, boy, that's just brilliant. That's just, oh, brilliant they made. Um, yeah, so that's that. Uh, format data label display unit. Um, format data label. Oh yeah. So um, so you know so this this formatting, it, this applies on uh, specific to a visual. So you can have this one as auto, but you can show the same amount somewhere else, and where you want to see up to the specific dollar, and then you can say none, and you would see kind of the dollars and cents. So um, uh, and, and of course um, you know uh, so so when I say display units none, then this visual is just showing what the underlying. Um, measure is or measure or column hopefully you're using measures and and that measure has its own formatting oh i see what's happening i uh, sorry the, the decimal unit is kind of overriding that yeah so so this was auto earlier anyway uh so yeah so so your field has a formatting but then this formatting can be overridden visual by visual in the in the what is this called the whatever this is, thing is called, the uh, field well, format, you know, yeah, you know what I'm talking about, this guy right here. So, uh, so yeah, so you can override that. Good stuff. Okay, uh, let's see if we can get a third one. Gabriel Medina, and then maybe we'll circle back and look at the other tabs that Fondle has. So let's see what Gabriel wrote in. Oh, go 19 dashboard. So I have two COVID-19 dashboards, general view and outline. Wow. And evolution and comparison between countries. And if you want to have a lot of power, your course. Awesome. Well, we would love to see those in. So let's see. COVID-19 measures and trends. So I'm opening up right now. He did send like screenshots as well as a Power BI file, so that's great. Oh, he actually sent um, these published uh, to the web. So I didn't have to open the file, I guess. That's awesome. Okay, now I've seen a glimpse of these. Let's 
So the first one is COVID-19 general dashboard. And the second one is trends. Oh, this is the same one, I think I opened twice. Yep, this is the trend. So I'm going to close one of these. Go back here. All right, where do I put myself here? All right, so first of all, again, hey, great work on doing this and great work for sending it in. Right, folks? So you got to do the work and you got to tell others about it. If nobody knows, right? I mean, the, the, the worst case, and the worst case scenario is not like sometimes when I was in corporate America, like only one person knew about my work, which was my manager. But sometimes it was zero <laughs> because, you know, I would get a new manager or something like that. And, uh, oh boy, you know, you start over again. Uh, so it helps to, to more. So imagine if you did good work and it wasn't like zero or one person know, who knows about that work. What if there were 10 people who knew about that with whom you had shared your story? What if it was 100? within organization? What is if it was a thousand within and outside of organization? What if it was 10,000? You see where I'm going with this, right? You did the same work. That didn't change, right? You didn't become smarter, right? But if 10,000 people know your story, now you're powerful. Now you can control your destiny. Now, if you're laid off, you have people lined up. That's, oh man. Yeah. I mean, I've heard stories like that. I was like, yeah, I mean, laid off and then companies like can't wait to hire you or uh, you lost one client and you go oh hey I'm available now I have some bandwidth and you know people are like jumping over each other trying to get you um, and again you're already doing the work right you're already doing the hard part just go one step more so yeah kudos on that um, cool so let's see uh, what do we got we got some some details here by country cases that we got some trends over here uh, we got some uh, big numbers over here, big numbers here too. Uh, we got some metadata, like when was this updated, and we have slicers to kind of break things down. And we got the, the title and stuff and so forth at the bottom. All right, so um, just one page. Oh, this is, uh, this is two sheets. What is this? Yeah, I don't know what's the difference between the first and the second page. Maybe they're the same, maybe they're not. I think they're the same, right? Uh, okay, cool. So, uh, so let's see. Um, So again, data pixel, data pixel economy. Any pixel that is not data, you gotta eliminate or minimize. So I would I would kind of question this fill color. I think that's taking a lot of attention. So first of all, I mean, if you, if you do the squint test, and I've, I think you forgot to do it with the other ones, but I often do. So if you squint, what do you see first? Like just, you know, kind of half close your eyes and say, like, what do you see? And, and boy, I mean, this one is pretty clear. My eyes go right here, maybe, maybe just in this area. And again, there's no good or bad, right? You just got to see that, is that the intention, right? Is it intentionally designed? It's not a dashboard by accident, it's a dashboard by design, right? So did you want them to look in here? Now, if you wanted them to look here, so again, the general layout is that this corner is the most important and then the order of importance of the screen real estate goes down like this because that's the way people often scan because we read that way. So, uh, so yeah, so I would, you know, some really quick fixes, yeah, bump up the important data up at the top, show it right here, or show it at the top like that uh, and then you can and, and then you go from less detail like high level to low level so what I would do is this would be number one right so this is number one and then this would be number two right so and then this is the most detailed element you have so this is gonna come last so that's gonna come number three so that's how I would try to lay out in general and again uh, in, in this order right so the uh, number one stuff comes at the top and then the other stuff maybe the graph uh, graph goes here and and then the table kind of goes off to the side so so the most detailed stuff you save it for the last but why because it's it's, it's harder for us to consume that it's, it's this one you can take in an instant so you give them the high level high level 
and then they go and then they're ready for the detail. If you hit them with the detail right away, they're kind of lost in there, right? I mean, this is the first thing they're looking at and they're reading the numbers and it takes a lot of time, a lot of processing power. So give them the high level stuff. So we're gonna scan it this way. So here, um, yeah, I, feel, I, I see what you're kind of doing, kind of six and deaths, but I would definitely encourage and explore different ways, right? So again, you look at your dashboard and if you can partner with like an accountability buddy or somebody, right? Somebody else you know, friend, colleague, whatever, family, <laughs> right? Um, um, and you can say, hey, can you just look at, look, at, look at my dashboard? Because we're often too close to our work, we can't kind of evaluate it. Um, and sometimes the other person sees it and, and it works great. It works in other levels too, by the way. So within our, you know, the Pro Plus group that I keep talking about, and, and of course, if folks, if you're interested, you can go to our site and, um, you know, so training kind of Pro Plus, that's where you'll find that information. But uh, the funny thing is that, um, in a way, I'm, I'm, I'm a coach in this group, but I learn all the time as well, because, you know, we, we can't see, see your own mess, right? You know, it's like reading a, a label on a wine bottle while being inside. And so sometimes I, I see that from others that say, hey, Avi, why are you doing this way? Or why are you not doing that? And that sort of stuff. So, uh, so yeah, so bounce it off of somebody's, hey, can you take a look? And again, I mean, if they are, are, are trained in this, and, and hopefully they are, uh, then they're gonna go through kind of some of the same steps that we talk about. So data pixels, non-data pixels, you gotta eliminate or minimize. So first you would see, okay, can I just eliminate it, right? And then, um, or if not, can I minimize it, right? So, well, maybe it doesn't need to have the whole background, maybe the text itself can be colored, maybe this can be colored, or maybe just this can be colored. Or actually, the uh, there's one which I, let's see if I can pull up. Mm. I used icons, which I'm sure is not new, it's not like my idea, but um, uh, that worked out uh, pretty well. Challenge. Okay, so I'll, I'll pull it off, pull it up on the side. Oh. Okay, great. So, so yeah, it's a minimize or eliminate. And um, what else? So we, we, yeah, and I think that that could help. So global data, six percentage sick that's total debts all right and and this one i don't know what this this one does like if i say percentage Oh, got it. I think cases, it chooses what is being shown there. So that is a pretty sophisticated technique. Let's see if it works the way I think it does. Ah, yep, it does, right? So you choose it here, and it, it is linked to that. So, so whatever I choose here is going to be shown here. Uh, I do want to bring up uh, one other example here uh, that I have to talk more about that. Let me do that. So folks, this is inside our course. I think both of the examples that I'm showing are in the in the advanced level, the advanced Power BI. All right. So uh and and um yeah, I think that you, you got to figure out how to kind of use the space. So since this thing, it seems to be only affected affecting that one, you need to somehow link those two. Oh, there we go. Okay. All right. So you know where you have the sick 
and the debts and so forth. So this is one we had done. This was actually the first Real Power BI projects, if you folks know what I'm talking about. If you don't, go to realpowerbi.com. It's a pretty cool thing we do. We connect uh, basically our Pro Plus students with the with businesses where they work on real projects. So this was the first one. And uh, yeah, if, if you notice here, I have used these icons. So she had a lot of financial data, and then she had something different, right? I mean, clients and hours and so forth. So notice I, I used these icons, right? And obviously these are just small images. I think that was good. And of course, we're using kind of space intentionally as well. We, we use space to kind of, we left some space between this. So uh, space is, of course, you've heard me talk about this. That's probably the most powerful element in dashboard design. Space, nothing, blank space, right? So the more effectively you can use it, the more powerful you become. Um, right, so so yeah, so uh, we're using space, but we're also using these small, small icons. So maybe, maybe you can use something like that. So again, in that case, you wouldn't have to use kind of these colors. You can just have like some kind of an icon which indicates sick, death. Um, obviously, a little bit of a, a morbid subject, but hey, it is what it is. Um, and, and yeah, recovered uh, is the last one. I don't know if you guys can see it on on, on on YouTube. I know it clips clips it off a little bit, but um, uh, but yeah, at the bottom we have uh, recovered. So uh, uh, so yeah, so maybe we can try icons, but yeah, so minimize and so forth. Okay, so that was one, and my finance dashboard is up. So so this thing that you got going on, where six is controlling, like this slice is controlling that, I'm gonna show you financial dashboard. This is in the course in the advanced module. And let's see, do, 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 do. wow. So I have something similar going on here dog is here. Come on, up, 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 up. Yeah. Okay, uh, that's my dog. If she jumps up, you'll see her. Maybe she jumps up. Come on, come on. There you go. All right, that's her. <laughs> She's a cutie. So uh, what we have here is, um, is I have this selector. Uh, so to give you a bit of the background, um, finance folks, love you all. I've hung out with you so much, and they have a very specific way of looking at, looking at things. So they would come in in August, 2017 in this case, and they want to see how did the month go, how have we done in the quarter so far, how are we doing here today. And then this is kind of forecast year end and so forth. But then what we saw was that they would look at these numbers, and sometimes the discussion would, they would dive in, like whatever the manager or the, you know, president or vice president, whoever the, who was leading that group, they would fixate on the month, and they would say, what went on this month? Why are we down minus 8%? And sometimes they wouldn't care about the month. They would focus on the whole quarter. And sometimes they would focus on the year to date. So depending on what, which way the discussion went, we wanted to see more details of either the current month or the quarter or the year to date. So that's what we set up. And, and so we have, uh, you know, kind of the same way you have, you know, the slices let you control. And I got a, uh, oops, there's a layout problem here, but... Uh, What's going on? Oh yeah, there we go. Is it working? I think it is. Yeah, there you go. So, uh, so yeah, so we could we could choose, and and based on what you chose, like so now it's showing me. So notice that the month total is one eight five five, and that is what we're seeing at the bottom, right? And then I could, uh, so we were seeing basically the breakdown of the month, a lot more detail, and and then you can go quarter day, and then what's going to do is going to take this number and blow it up, so you can see more detail, right? So you know, so we can say minus 6%, but now you can see that, hey, who is causing that minus 6% decline, right? So you can, you know, you can see kind of the variances. So, so anyway, I mean, forget about the details, but that you get the idea that you can choose a scenario. But notice how this is all very intentional. So what have I done? For one, uh, I have put the selector close to the stuff that it impacts, right? So it's right next to it. And if you notice that the thing that ties it together is is this color and this line, right? So, and again, it's, you know, less is more, so you just need to give it a hint. So I think that in this case, this hint is good enough. It, it, it tells them that, yep, this selector controls this stuff. Now, somebody could uh, take this yellow color and fill it over here in this background, in this whole section, 
right? Uh, oops, in this whole section. Um, you could try that if you think you need it. You could you could do that, but of course you mini you eliminate or minimize non-data pixels. So in this case, I chose not to. I decided that you know a line is kind of good enough. So you know the color and the line, the color of the line, the color of this background is like saying, yep, this controls the section below. But they're right next to each other, and they have some kind of indi indication. This color, in this case, tying it together. Uh, and in this case, you kind of have neither, right? So there's no color connection to here, and the the positioning is kind of odd. So what I would say is that you need to make these kind of separate. So you know, maybe put that here, and then you're gonna have this this whole thing. This guy, you're gonna actually put it kind of there. Oops, let's try. Uh, pink, right so so that graph you, you know you kind of move it here and then you put the the slicer right next to it you see what I'm saying and then it's gonna be boom and of course you can either and again less is more so minimize a non-data pixel you can of course do it by filling in a background but often you don't need that and again white space is the most powerful maybe you can just leave some space around that element right so 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 br break bring that element but then you know just leave some white space here and down at the bottom and that will separate that visually it'll be a separate section right so um, and our brains are smart you give them a clue and they figure out the rest right so uh, so that's uh, one feedback so um, so cool so I think uh, this was good uh, and and I think I mentioned this but yeah you gotta you gotta kind of effectively use your space I mean there's a lot of blank space here which um, is standing out so you're gonna have to figure something there maybe move around the elements give them some breathing room and and of course you know I mean once you move around the elements uh, maybe you you have a solution for that uh, I'll say that in, in you can see um, I mean you don't have to fill every corner with data in this case we didn't we work with the client and and yeah it's kind of simple stuff and so forth but it's it's just um, yeah lots of white space and that's I, I think that's okay um, and somebody could say that yeah that space is poorly utilized here <laughs> which I guess it is but uh, yeah so think of this as real estate we're not making the best use of all of it but uh, but it's, it's okay to leave some room because BI is a living breathing thing and it's gonna evolve over time so um, uh, if you leave space then when they look at it for a week or a month or a year well it's actually much quicker you know a day a week or a month right uh, mostly on the day or a week side they'll come back to you and they'll say oh this is cool everybody loves it can we have this and then you have that discussion so you know if starting out it's okay to leave some blank space in fact I would leave a whole chunks of it right sometimes I would I would have half of it empty and say yep you know these are the key things you asked this is where it is and this stuff is blank and yep well, what, what do you need next <laughs> right, so so yeah that's okay all right folks so that was uh, pretty awesome let's look at some of the comments um, Manisha saying we can also use map visual for COVID-19 dashboard yep so map is probably a visual which is um, the most abused one <laughs> which is used most inappropriately like why 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 are you showing it on map like you know I mean it's just I've seen weird stuff I've done weird stuff let's let's be let's be honest here right it's just you know it's just, it's just us <laughs> so I can be honest with you guys so I've, I've done weird stuff where you take um, uh, you know like this this country this five countries and put this on a map and like whoa you know and and it's 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 useless <laughs> you know I mean God why would you put that on a map right it just doesn't make any sense right so um, what are you trying to convey so uh, but uh, map when you do need a map you can't have anything else. I mean, when you need that geographical information, and, and uh, oh my God, even if you're doing maps, please don't do pie charts. I mean, you know, the, the more detail, it's it's useless, right? So don't do that. Um, uh, but when you need it, then it's great. So yeah, in this case, map visual, I think it I think it could work. Uh, so Regina is asking, I think about the discussion we had earlier about the other. So I think regarding placing other at the end of a bar chart. You can set the order of the axis by creating a new table that has a column variables you want to order and then add an index column. I did think about that, but the challenge for that, the huge challenge, so, so folks, if you go back, uh, let me bring it up. Where, where is it? By the way, we were talking about motion earlier, and I talked about the cursor right at the beginning of this call. And um, one setting that I have in, in my mouse, I have three screens now. I got the third one when we ran the conference, and I'm glad I did, um, is I have this setting where if I hit the control key, 
it, it does this thing around my mouse. But again, you can see how, how motion is it's so uh, powerful. So yeah, use it with care, right? With great power comes great responsibility. So we were talking about, I think, uh, not this dashboard, mm, the school one. Yep, right here. Oh, was it this? God, I'm, <laughs> I've jumbled up my dashboards in my head now. Uh, I think this guy. So you were talking about putting other at the bottom. Now the challenge is this, that, boy, this one is, is, is so if you didn't have this top five, actually if we, man, actually, I don't know how, big, so the challenge is that if we sort, if we make a table out of this and we say, oh, after sales is, is one, 140 is two, D6 is three, 320 is four, four, well, yeah, and so on, right? We can do that. We can do that. And then say, uh, sort this label, the label which says after sales 140D6320, sort it by that number. Can anybody see the challenge with that? The challenge with that is this, when you say sort by column, it has to be a column. It cannot be a measure. You cannot say sort by this measure. Actually, can you do that now? <laughs> Maybe that's what we need. But if you do sort by column, you're stuck because it's static. Columns are static. So if I imagine if I if I select a specific year and the order changes, now D6 is more than 140, it is not gonna update that. So that is the challenge with doing a sort by column. Uh, that's the only thing that's kind of holding me back. Uh, man, I mean, Boy, I guess we need a idea to say sort by and and a, a measure. Sounds crazy that I'm asking for it. All right, folks. So um, let's see. So let's uh, wind it down. Um, I'm going to give a shout out to our next week's Talk Power BI. That's the Power On Show with Charles and Avi. And, and frankly, that has been so liberating for me. I mean, over time, if you've been following me for years, you, you've seen kind of the changes. <laughs> and uh, so I was talking to one of our Pro Plus members and and um, they were talking about how to do video and all that stuff. And, and I said that this journey, at least for me, has been about becoming more and more true to myself, becoming more and more kind of authentic and being comfortable with that and also realizing that that is your most powerful self. And of course, now that I've been slowly stepping into it, it's not it's not easy, it seems different. It's certainly different than what I did for like 40 plus years of my life. But it, it's it's very liberating and it's also more powerful. I think you get more powerful results in your life from all aspects, from the personal aspect to professional aspects. So if you think about it, you know, I mean, again, 40 plus years I did that where I wasn't being myself. I wasn't being my authentic self. I was, um, I was just, you know, wearing a mask. Not only professionally, not only when I showed up at work, I was this work obby, right? And had to be buttoned down, and and you know just the simple stuff, right? I mean, I, I had this roller blinds from IKEA, and I would pull them down because I was embarrassed about the fact that I was working from home. Whoa, what happened there? Yeah, and um, and now I'm okay with it. I mean, I have to make up my bed in the morning, but I think that's a good thing, <laughs> um, right? And um, yeah, and I think the the more authentic we become, things line up in other aspects, because so kind of on the personal side, kind of the professional side. You, you see better results. I can't tell you why that's the case. But, but, but yeah, I mean, I think there's something that when we become more authentic, we're more powerful. So there is this, uh, there's this quote, uh, which I shared recently. Um, uh, or, or, or biggest fear. Oh, God. Uh, who, who's a fan of this? So, I'm not much into like I would say poetry or anything, but there's there are two poems that I love. One is uh, "If" by Rudyard Kipling. Oh God, I love that one. And there's this line in there. So let's do both. So <laughs> I know not Power BI, but uh, 
uh, g- good one. Oh God, there where is this? This is not really a quote. This is kind of a poem. Uh, Murray Williamson. I, I just want to see it laid out as a poem. Ah, the suspense. What's going on? Let's, so, if by Rudyard Kipling. And, man, this one is really powerful. And, hey, I'll, I'll, I'll just stick it in, in the chat for you guys. So, that's if. And there is this, um, there's so much good stuff in here. There's, uh, uh, there's, yeah, this one. It's like, if you can, if you can bear to hear the truth, you have spoken, twisted by knaves to make a trap for fools. Somehow that resonates with me. And, and this, um, oh boy, yeah, I mean, like stuff that you worked on all your life, broken and kind of build it again. Somehow that's, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm getting emotional right as I'm reading it. Uh, so I think this might be like different parts. And um, let's go over here. Oh God, what's, why, why can't I, let's see if you can. All right, so yeah, I love this one. So our deepest fear, right? And I'm just gonna, hey, if it's okay with you guys, I'm just gonna read it out. I think it's powerful. So our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. Actually, that that's, that's a, that's, that's a line that I love. So think about this, right? And, and I think that's true. And I think that's what's going on. And that's why when we become more and more authentic, we become more and more powerful because we step into the power that we always had. And there was this other line that was playing in my head, which was uh, like, no, nobody's coming to save you. But you know, that's great news. In fact, when you realize that, and let that sink in, you're gonna feel super powerful because you realize that it's all on you, but you is all that it takes. You don't need anybody else. You are enough, right? So, all right, so, um, all right, folks. So, um, do good work, tell great stories. So we're gonna do the dashboard again. So folks, I know one of you had sent that in. Leo, uh, sorry, mate, we're not gonna get to it because I, uh, I gotta head out on a on a hike, so uh, you know this is one thing that I've been kind of uh, shy about. Uh, I don't know why. Uh, and again, I'm, I'm stepping in the journey of kind of being true to myself. I, I, I announced a little bit, but then I kind of, uh, you know, kind of we uh, hit that page on the website. You can't find this page on the website. But um, uh, but what I'm doing is um, I made a goal. I started hiking last year, and last year this this would have seemed like a crazy goal, but now it seems achievable. So I've um, I have a goal of climbing uh, or hiking like an elevation gain of 100,000 feet. And um, um, as I'm going, I'm donating money to kind of Operation Smile. So every thousand, you know, like by the end of the year, I would have donated $1,000, right? So 100,000 feet and $1,000 uh, to donate a smile. And this has a story. So uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put this in here uh, if, if you guys care. Um, and uh, I'm not, so uh, yeah, so I'm not asking for donation or something. This is just kind of um, something I'm doing. Kind of for myself, so uh, I gotta go run to that. So I'm I'm going to. Uh, uh, some of you saw the. Uh, I don't know if you're following me on LinkedIn. Hey, if you're not following me on LinkedIn, definitely follow me on LinkedIn. And frankly, I hope it's gonna be okay with everybody. But LinkedIn, I share more of the personal stuff, more of the. I don't know, kind of behind the cover stuff, and I hope that's okay. And and we're gonna be doing a bit more of that. Next Friday with Charles. And again, I was talking about that where being with Charles has given me the permission to be myself. It's kind of funny, right? I mean, sometimes we need somebody else to make that happen for us. We shouldn't need that, but uh, you know, that's true for me. So yeah, so next week, uh, we're going to talk about this. And uh, so on, on LinkedIn, if you kind of follow me, then uh, uh, that was my last post about the importance of taking time off. Uh, seriously, guys, I mean, working from home means that it's even more important for you to take the time off. And um, hey, if you can hear me, me just a bit. Mm, articles, let's see. Yeah, there we go. So so yeah, so um, I made a good dent in the 100,000. So I've crossed 30,000 feet now. 
uh, and uh, yeah, there's still a long way to go. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so today I'm doing another lake. Today is uh, uh, Rachel and something lake. Lake. Ra oh yeah, Rachel and Rampart Lake Trail. So this is the one that I'm doing. Uh, let's see how it looks like. And yeah, this is going to add 2,575 feet to my goal. <laughs> and it's, it's been slow progress, slow and steady. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm excited. So that's that's kind of what I'm doing. So I got to go for that um, because I don't want to come be hiking uh, when it's when it's dark outside. So I uh, better get going. Uh, so folks, thanks again. And again, join us uh, next week for that um, candid, casual, you know, hang out with Charles, Life of Power BI Consultant. And um, of course, if you're live, you're gonna ask questions there. We may do things before that where we'll say, hey, if you have any questions, you wanna line up for that show, which you always wanted to ask, uh, then you know we can line it up and maybe start with those or something like that. But, uh, but yeah, it's just gonna be us hanging out. So uh, catch us next week. And if you were a Power BI conference attendee, and if you're a student, then check in the Facebook group, the link to get access to the recording. If you're not a student, that's coming soon. That should happen most likely Monday. We kind of have it ready, uh, but but yeah, we just need to line up a few other things before we kind of open it up to the to the rest of the community. Sorry, it took some time. Um, our first conference, so <laughs> we had done online events before, so I think the conference went great. I really enjoyed the experience, but we had never managed kind of the post conference tasks, and that was uh, another story. All right, folks. I'll see you next time. Until then, power on.